All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to an introduction to Fantasy Star Online 2. Uh, we are back with our character Ninjaz 2 here, and we are going to take a look at the My Room function of the game. So, uh, without further ado, let's go straight into it. Now, to get up to your room, you're going to want to go to the green elevators. Scroll all the way up to the top, and the top option is going to be My Room. In case you're wondering, the second option is the Team Room, in case you're a member of a team, aka a guild, that has a Team Room uh, purchased. But, we'll go to My Room, and it'll ask if we really want to go there. I don't know why, but we do. And here we are in my room. Now, when you start off, your room is not going to look like this. Um, in fact, I can show you exactly what your room will look like. This. So when you start, you're going to have a room like this. It's going to be bland and uh, completely undecorated. You get your little balcony, as well as your background cityscape, which is pretty cool. Now, there are a limit to what you can do with your room unless you've got a premium account. They've got some sort of point system, depending on the amount of items and stuff that you put up in your room. So, it is pretty limited to my knowledge, but I'm running on a premium account, so I'm not exactly sure what the cap is. Uh, I have yet to hit a cap on the premium, so... If you're just playing free-to-play, though, there is some sort of limit, and you can only put so many items in your room before you need to upgrade your account status. But, let's head back to my room proper here. So, obviously, I have expanded my room size via remodeling kits. And in addition to this main room, I have two side rooms. Over here, this is the right side room, which is currently empty. And then I've got a left side room as well over here, with a few things in it. And, of course, I've got a balcony, which stretches among all three of the rooms, so that's a shared space. And as you can see, my background scenery is different. I thought this one was actually really, really cool, so... Now, some things about rooms that are pretty sweet, a lot of the items in here are interactive that you set up. Uh, for example, this weapon hologram is actually a weapon that I had on my one of my other characters, actually. So, if I press this button here, I can uh, actually look at the weapon stats for that weapon. Gives me all that information. Or I can press the top option here, and I can choose a different weapon and have it display that one instead. But I kind of like how it is, so I'm not actually going to change it. But that's how I would do that. Or I could come over here and sit down. Having a conversation with my Rappy doll. There's some other things too, like the darts area. You can virtually play darts. Unfortunately, you're not able to just uh, actually, you know, control the dart throw yourself. But, oh well, it's sometimes kind of fun to mess around. I've got a mochizuki, which is, uh, if you know much about Japanese culture, mochi is kind of a traditional rice cake that you would make this way. You mash it with a big wooden mallet and uh, 
then you have somebody else who turns it over while you're mashing it. But that's about all there is to this. It's kind of just for fun. I've also got over here the jukebox, as well as these little displays. Those are just kind of to look at. The jukebox is practical, though. You can use it to uh, change the background music for your room. So I will do that right now, in fact. Because the one we've got right now is kind of a little bit overly active. Let's change it to this. It's a little uh, calmer. But I can go in here and add in more music discs, which you can purchase off the auction, or you can get them in events, or just uh, doing missions and stuff. Sometimes the enemies will drop them. Or there's this option, which goes back to the original background music. Okay, now you may have noticed I've got these two rooms with this oriental theme going on here, but uh, this room over here is a little different. That's a bit of a problem. I want to fix that, and I'll show you how to change your room theme, as well as how we're going to put some stuff in here. So, first off, we want to use this console. Now, you're going to have one of these in every room. You can have up to three rooms. Uh, like I've got, and yes, they can all be remodeled to be this large size if you want. So you could have three large rooms like this all connected. Not going to be very cheap to get that way, but it is doable. Now if we access this menu, there's a whole lot of stuff here. So I'll just go over these real quick and show you what each one does. So first off, this is the option to take out room goods. So if I click on this, I've got uh, different things. I can access my personal stuff that's on my person. Apparently I'm carrying a belt conveyor, for whatever reason. As well as my storage is also accessible. So, uh, let's see. What do we want to take out? So many options. Let's put out another Rappy doll. So now I can use the arrow keys to move this around, and of course I can still move around with my normal view. And as you can see, the blue indicates a place that you can put something, and the red, or orange I guess, indicates you can't place it there. So I can put this Rappy doll all the way back here. And if I hold down Control and press the arrow keys, I get the option of rotating it. So I want them facing this way, and just hit Enter to finalize. And now if I come over here, sure enough, there's the Rappy we just put down. This rather annoying machine here is a good job machine. Somebody can come to my room, press the button, and it gives me a good job point. Yay. Anyways, um, you may also be wondering, how about things like tables and shelves and stuff like this? So, um, whoops. Just accidentally put that table away. Let's put that back out. So let's see, let's rotate it, and then it was right about there. Now if you want to put something on top of a table or in a shelf or anything like that, you need to run over to the actual object. Notice it's got two different places here it highlights. If I press E on one of those, it'll give me the option of putting something on it. So I can swap places here and put the light there. Do it again and put the Rappy doll here. And again, if I hold control and press the keys, the arrow keys, I can uh, change the rotation. So. so that is how you would place stuff on a table or in a shelf. So you need to actually run over to the spot where you want to put it. Just like here. 
Now the next option here is to put in lights. Now the lighting system is a bit strange. Um, large rooms have four points that you can hang lights from. Small rooms have two points. Now you can't actually see those points, uh, but they're there. They're center in the, in the small rooms here. They're along the center. There's one over right about here, directly above me. And then one about here, directly above me. So let's go ahead, and I've got a couple lights in my storage. Now what you have to do with this is you click on it, and then you have to choose which room you want to put lights in. So let's go ahead and do it over for the left side. And then I have to choose which point I want to put the lights on. So let's check here. I've got uh, a compatible light right there. And I just put that in there. That's all it took. So that was point one, which is apparently the one that's furthest away from the door. So now there's that light. So if I wanted to add lights now to all of this, just rinse and repeat. Okay, so now we've got those lights all set up, and my doesn't that look fine. And here as well, very nice. Okay, so this is all fine and good, but what about this theme? Pretty cool looking in and of itself, but uh, I'd kind of like to have it match the rest of the area, so I'm going to change that now. Now, to do that, I need to come down here, but first let's take a look at these two. This is the support partner option. That is for later on, once you get a support partner. Uh, my main character does have one, but this guy does not. You'll get a little console that looks like this, and you get to create a miniature character that will uh, fill it up or stand there. And that miniature character you can send out on missions, or you can take them out with you on missions, uh, or just have them go out on their own and collect some goods for you for some of the client orders and things that you take. So it's a pretty handy thing. Um, I'll probably have to cover that in and of itself in another tutorial uh, introduction video. But uh, it is pretty cool feature. Next up is the craft menu. This they just added to the game. So this is all new content here. I'm not really familiar with anything that goes on in this menu. So we're going to kind of skip that for now. And I'll try to come back to that in another video at a later date and show you guys how to do crafting and stuff. So the one we want is right down here. This is Room Reform. So if I click on that, you can see my three rooms here. One of these is not like the others. So I click on the room that I want to change. And, oh, as luck would have it, I just happen to have in storage, one of the exact same theme as the other rooms. So if I click on this, it will confirm with me, do I want to change to that theme? This is actually a very important thing to confirm. When I change the theme of a room, the previous theme does not go back into your storage. It's lost. So that Chinese theme that's on in that room right now is gone. I've lost that. Likewise, if I were to change away from this Oriental theme, I would lose that theme. I could go in and rebuy it later and reapply it, but it's not like you can just toggle them on or off. So very important to keep in mind. Now it has to reload this. But there we are, and let's check. Up, oh, sure enough, we've changed it to the Oriental theme. So now everything is nice and matching. Except for my bathtub, but hey, it's all cool. Yes, you can take a bath with your clothes on. Of course. Okay, now that room is looking pretty empty. We'll have to put some more stuff in there, but uh, let's take a look at the rest of the menu here first. 
So, next up is, this is actually the option to move, but what it really does is just change that background scenery. So, the stuff that you see back here off the balcony, you can change that. Now, I don't have another scenery to change it to, and I don't really want to. The scenery that I've got right now is really cool. I like it, so I'm not going to change that. Likewise, with the themes, if you change to a different scenery, the previous scenery is lost. Next up is the room lock. This allows you to change what you want, uh, well, for who can visit your room. So you've got friends only. Well, right now it's set to anyone. Friends only. Team members only. Friends and team members. And I'm not sure what this is, but I highly suspect it's just me. So anyone can go into my room. I'm cool with that. Other people can interact with your stuff, but they can't change it. So... I could have somebody in there using the dart machine or the, the mulchit ski, and that's fine. They can do that. I don't really care about that. They can't break it or anything like that. They can't move things around, so. Uh, next up, after the lock, this is the room layouts. Now, earlier, you might have seen me... Uh... Oh. <laughs> There's a buddy. Uh, earlier, you might have seen me moving around... Uh between the A and B layouts, you're only going to have access to these if you're on a premium account. So this is just a separate way of setting up kind of a different room, if I wish. So if I click on B, it'll take me back to that base room because I haven't set up a secondary layout. So I'm in layout A right now, and it's going to stay like that. Notice that it's got that little AC symbol on it, meaning that you have to pay or have a premium account to do that. Last but not least is the clean up room items. If you click on this and then choose a room, it will clean up everything in that room and stick it back in your inventory. So, for example, this room has nothing in it except for this bathtub. It's part of the balcony, it's considered part of this room. So, if we come over here and we say we want to clean up this room, take the right side, it'll confirm, yes. And, oh wow, there's no bathtub. Well, if I look in my inventory, there it is. I've got a bathtub now in my inventory. So it just picks up everything that's in the room and sticks it back in your inventory in one shot. So if you're changing some stuff around, it's pretty handy because you don't have to go around and manually pick up each and every little item. Uh, one thing to note, though, is if somehow you manage to highlight, say, just the table underneath these guys and you put that back in your inventory, it will pick up all the stuff that's sitting on the table and put that into your inventory as well. So no floating objects or dropping objects onto the floor or anything like that. Okay, so some of the other stuff that we want to do here. Let's really quickly stick a couple of objects in this room. Whoops, wrong console. So I'll go to room goods. And I picked up a couple of crafting items that I would like to set out. Let's see, where did I put those? I know, I have way too much stuff. Ah, here we are. Craft console. Craft X builder and craft tech builder. So let's put out the console. Wow, that's awfully big. And let's move it into this room. 
Now notice this one wants to be along a wall. So it won't let me just stick it out in the floor. It has to be up against a wall. So uh, yeah, sure, that's good. Can't rotate it. There we are. And then, let's see, what else? I've also got the Craft X Builder. And this one, it looks like I can put wherever I want to. But I'll keep it nice and tidy and put it right over here next to this. And then, last but not least, I've got the Tech Builder. So let's slide that over right next to the other one. And there they are. So here is all the crafting stuff, and good golly, that is complicated. But we'll worry about that later. One other thing, I actually just noticed this. If I'm putting an object out here, you can see I've got that 44 out of 150 kind of at the top of the screen there. I think that is actually your room points. So it would cost me 44 points. I'm not sure if that's for this item alone or if that's total what it'll be once I've placed it. Anyways, I don't need to put a bathtub in there just right now. So uh, there we are. There is one more part of having uh, your room. It's actually technically separate from it, but you'll notice I've got a little bit of a shop thing here. Now this is optional, but I do have my own shop running. So the top option here of the Visiphone is my shop. Now before you saw I had the uh, auctions and things like that to go into up there, but down here towards the bottom, second up, I've got a my shop. Now if I click on this, it opens up the window that lets me put goods into a storefront that other people can view on the auctions and uh, and purchase from. In fact, I keep calling it auctions, but it's actually not auctions. It's set prices that people are selling goods for. So that when somebody searches for an item, mine can appear up in that list. Now this requires, again, either a premium account or there are uh, temporary passes that you can get that allow you to use the shop. Uh, I believe those are 700 AC, uh, just for the shop for 30 days. I believe you can also get some three-day shop passes, but you get those for events or things like that. So the shop menu, I'll just real briefly go over here. The top two options are put things into your shop, take things out of your shop, and these are from your pack, so what you're carrying on you. Similar to buying stuff in the regular stores, there is put stuff in or take stuff out of your inventory or storage. The next option is your welcome message. And you can have a uh, symbol art picture down here if you want. I don't have any designated, so uh, I don't have any to put in there. But you can put one up there if you want in some sort of custom art when people are looking at your shop. And the bottom option is a list of transactions that your shop has had. And this list goes way back. You can actually view... Uh, let's see. Well, it's only the recent stuff for me right now, but uh, when I first logged in a day or two ago, it still had all the transactions from, like, 2012 listed so it keeps a pretty long-winded record as well as this is the option of where you get to collect your money so stuff that people buy in your shop is all going to show up down here all that money doesn't go into your inventory 
it goes into this, and then you click the button here, and you'll pull that into your character's inventory. So, that about does it. So, shops are, uh, well, shops and your room, they're a pretty cool feature. They don't have a whole lot of practical purpose yet. We'll uh, see if that changes with this crafting stuff. But uh, it's mostly just kind of a place to kind of hang out and enjoy some of the little trophies and things that you've picked up. All of these flowers and things are stuff that I've picked up from doing missions. And uh, you can set them all up, as well as invite other people to come join you. And yeah, just hang out in your room. It's pretty cool. So, again, doesn't serve a real practical purpose, but it is fun, and it does add to the game. Anyways, I do hope that you've enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Thanks again. Bye-bye.